so what do you so once you so your film gets in what do you what do you need to do, do you, can you just show up at the festival with your movie well you what? can <laughs> i wouldn't advise that i wouldn't either, either. Uh, not so, anymore no well not not at a big festival but i think you want to get like a uh you know a pr person on your film that's really it's yeah. <laughs> it's the first thing we actually have a list of all the what we think are the reputable PR firms and we just give that out. We don't recommend, but we give that out. So at least they, I mean, you guys kind of call, kind of happens very quickly. Well, I think you need, I mean, I think you absolutely need a sales agent and a publicist on yeah. any film that's publicist, going to, PR, right. um, that's going Big to a major thing. festival because without the two of us, I think it's absolutely. very hard to navigate it effectively. They just help and they help get you in that um, information. information. Yeah. Um, they have they they know um, they know the journalist and they know what journalists like and you might get in that group um, that that cluster uh, review where they're not really reviewing the films but they're you know they're covering the film with like those ten films so if you get Kenny Turan or Manola Dargis or any of those the big heavyweights in there they're gonna link it into the story which just adds to it yeah but yeah. even before that I yeah. mean there there are materials that that certainly I think we would both recommend be prepared. You may not require them, but you do for the most part. I mean, you certainly need to have some something written that positions the movie. And interestingly enough, we work very closely in this situation, this part of the process, because you have to <laughs> describe your movie and position it knowing that your objective is to sell it, yeah. which could be different when you go to release the movie. Yes. Not right. necessarily, but could be different. So when you pick a clip or two clips in case there's television coverage that you're gonna get out of it, you have to keep that same goal in mind. We're trying to sell this movie. What is it that we should show? What's the scene? You know, you know, it's, chances are it's going to be, well, whatever, it's hard to say without knowing what the movie is. But So there are some materials that need to be, be prepared in advance. Yeah, and sometimes you want to use a poster Photos, effectively. Poster. Sometimes you don't because... You, you know, you don't want to put an image out there that, right. you know, might not be received uh, in the most commercial light or, or might not help the, the sales effort. You know, there's there's that conversation. There's whether you show it to certain key critics ahead of the festival or whether you have them see it at the festival. Same thing on the buyers on the buyer side, whether you know, you show it uh, ahead of the premiere at the festival or whether you wait because it's going to be really well received with an audience. You know, so there's a lot of things that your sales agent and your publicist can advise and ahead of and so during and after the festival. It really the first is the thing. first best promotional opportunity, right? right. So, I mean, yeah. uh, we're coming up on the anniversary of, um, of um, Roger and me, and I remember that Michael Moore, who none of us had heard of at that point, was brilliant. From the time he submitted his VHS screener Ooh. of the film, <laughs> um, he was calling our print traffic office, which was at that point run by Noah Cowan, who's now running the San Francisco <laughs> Film Society. And he was saying, I've got this movie. It's You've never seen anything like it. I'm going to bring 100 auto workers up from Flint, Michigan to Toronto if you accept our movie. And we did, obviously. And from that point forward, he was just talking to everybody he could about his film, getting himself known, getting the story known, making sure that he made a real splash in Toronto, and of course it did, made a huge splash. And but that was just the director working it for months. He's that special kind of P.T. Barnum yeah. director, yeah. Yeah. like uh, Morgan Spurlock is. Yeah. Like yeah. these guys are good like that. But you might have a director who's not that. Right. And I think the first thing you do is get your director and say, "All right, when somebody asks you at a party, what's your film about?" Have that one <laughs> sentence and just get it down and make them just keep going through it. And every time they get start to get long winded, just eh, right. no, too long, <laughs> eh, too long, <laughs> because you want you um it is a question that gets asked all the time and i don't know how many times i they start to tell me the whole plot and i'm just like okay <laughs> moving on you know I, I i can't even absorb it and just that kind of um the 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 the, the party pitch is actually important right. you know because yeah. someone's going to change their schedule the next day to see your film because they met you and it sounds interesting those two things and when you're actually in the heat of the festival and and you've got your you know your big your gala if it's a gala or whatever your your first screening and then you have your P&I and then you have your second public 
my team, and we usually have numerous staffers at all of these festivals, they are literally at the theater, particularly for the P&Is, at the theater checking in people so we know exactly what journalists are in there. They stand at the door. They don't sit inside the, the screening. They stand at the door and watch because a lot of times people leave in the middle. A lot of times those people are buyers because not doesn't necessarily mean they didn't like the movie, but if they you might look be going at your to watch, another you one. can figure out that they're heading off to that other one right, right. that Cameron and Cooper scheduled at an inconvenient time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and then as soon as it's over, it's not civilized at all. It is like bees on honey. Our, my staff is there talking to every journalist, trying to get something out of them. What did you think? Did you like it? Did you not like it? Is it good? Not commercial? Good performance? Any morsel you can get. Because I would say our goal is within maybe two hours of the end of the screening, we need to have a memo in the hands of the sales agent and the filmmakers so they know, so I can say, Kenny Turan thought this is the best thing he's seen so far. Or, you know, Todd McCarthy hated it and walked out. That information they use instantly if, they're, if you're negotiating between two or three studios, the positive information can affect the price and conversely.